Hello friends, welcome to my Royal Family News channel. Before moving on to the video, if you are not subscribed to my channel, do not forget to subscribe and turn on notifications, so let's move on to the video. Get out. Broken trust William refused Harry despite King Charles's pleas there is no way to put together a broken glass, once it has shattered, no matter what it may look like, what is said, done when King Charles stood there between his feuding sons in the garden of Frogmore House after Prince Philip's funeral at Windsor Castle April 2021, please, boys, don't make my final years of misery, his heartfelt plea was, we only know, from the pages of Harry's autobiography, thanks to Harry's autobiography. Spare, that could be why absolutely nothing changed three more years later. Are we really to believe it was his father's cancer scare in the last few weeks that really convinced Harry to jump on a plane for an 11 mile round trip to see his dad for the first time in 17 months, not since the late Queen's funeral, pain, disappointment, betrayal, some would say these are on both sides of this new war of the Windsors. Now surely, though, their father's treatment for an unnamed form of cancer falls to both William and Harry to find at least a truce behind the scenes private at least, courtiers are speculating that William's going to have to swallow his pride not just for the sake of the family but also the monarchy, one day his to inherit, his darling sons, if nothing else, would love to see King Charles's two darling boys make peace, or will it simply be an uneasy ceasefire? I mean, William's pretty stubborn as we all know. He's a bit of a hothead, so William. So, I'm sure he sees Harry and thinks, well, I mean, I've got my work cut out for me. William, as you'll recall, it was just a barrage of petty insults and a lot of self-pity in his memoir as he tried to separate himself from the first-born life that was his destiny as the spare. As I say, the memoir was filled with smears of his older brother. He publicly declared that William was his arch-nemesis. He talked also about how frightened he was when his brother raised his voice to him during a family meeting. He also spilled the beans on their altercation, the broken dog bowl, the broken necklace. I mean, it's been sad, really so very sad, watching him seem to become obsessed with his older brother's destruction. I mean, Harry left UK with Meghan Markle, and ostensibly Archie too, so the story goes, to try to build a new life. But instead, he's acted as a whistleblower determining to turn over the royal family's dirty laundry to anyone who's willing to pay. So, I mean what about any world in which William would ever trust him again? How could he bring himself to forgive him? Now, his wife obviously used to be the peacemaker. I think after the last time he's gone out attacking William's lovely wife, Catherine so hard, I think we can all safely assume she's going to be recuperating from major abdominal surgery she's not going to be the glue. This time though it is, it is the way they've gone after Catherine. When Harry said royal men have to marry someone who would fit the mold, not someone they truly love, took the crown. That one hurt the most. Poor Harry isn't getting forgiven for those comments anytime soon. His old pal was asked how William was getting along with the uphole his one-word reply said it all he absolutely hates him. Can you blame him? No one in William's orbit does. Betrayal that's the biggie. Harry sold his family out to the media for millions of dollars, and William cannot forgive that breach of trust the friend says. William couldn't be more determined to have nothing to do with Harry, a determination that stands in stark contrast to King Charles's determination to try and make peace with his rogue son. So that meeting in London, sans Queen Camilla, who has her own reasons for not wanting to get anywhere near Harry again, between Charles and his son Harry was surely the first step towards reconciliation and reportedly mewy therapeutic for both of them. What we don't know is what King Charles had to say about Harry sharing the details of their meeting, just days after the fact, with ABC's Good Morning America. You'd think Harry would by now know how each of these indiscretions makes his father and brother feel. He just doesn't care. The heir and the spare are definitely on divergent tracks. They no longer share the same vision. They don't share the same values. They don't even live in the same country anymore. But no one should be duped by this sudden want for reconciliation. 
Harry and Meghan declared last year that 2024 was the year of reconciliation and 2024 was also the year that the invisible children would finally emerge out of the woods. Well, we have to remember that Tom Bauer told us that every move the L. A. pair make is intricately planned and plotted to its end. And here we are, February 2024. I mean, have they started the reconciliation plan yet? Is this what that meeting was about? What about the children's last name officially changing to Sussex and the kids being listed on their new website under those prince and princess titles? And we've also previously learned through our Sussex sources that Invictus Games are holding a 10-year service at St. Paul's in London in May. Harry reportedly being high-level talks with the British government because he wants Meghan and the kids to be there. Harry also wants over £5 million donated from Britain to a future UK Invictus Games. So I guess this certainly was one of those carefully planned, meticulously plotted schemes we heard about. So they want to arrive in the UK with top IPP for the whole family and the entourage too. A whole cavalcade of cars and outriders. And they're gonna insist that the Netflix camera crew has to follow them around. Remember, they can't really do anything without Netflix cameras following them around. And as they arrive at St. Paul's with the invisible children and the cameras following the whole city of London will be annoyed. I wouldn't be a bit surprised if Windsor Castle is put at their disposal with the cameras in tow. Oh, can you imagine? The jewelry, the ill-fitting designer outfits. It's gonna be one of Harry and Meghan's biggest paydays ever. Can you imagine the scene? I mean these two, who claim to despise the Brits and the monarchy too, are in the middle of the city lording over the very country they consider to be racist and compare the monarchy to a medieval theme night. This is their end game. Sticking those middle fingers right up to the British and the royal family too. And all of this, let's not forget friends, has been carefully planned and plotted. Meanwhile, in a separate publication, in a separate update, a guy called Graham Smith, who claims to be CEO of the anti-monarchy group Republic, has confirmed his latest book, Abolish the Monarchy. Why we should and how we will. Now he says he has all the arguments for Britain to democratically become a republic and once we're there, what happens? Okay, it's a very interesting DIY book if you ask me, a recipe to abolish the monarchy. So he's supposed to be releasing this book, get this, on the May 9th and slash or June 1st in paperback. They shouldn't waste any paper on this book if you ask me. I'm pretty sure most Brits won't give it a second thought, I certainly won't be reading it. I mean, the monarchy is a real asset to Britain and the Commonwealth we know that so there's no need to go into that. What I do find grotesque about this book though, is the fact that it is a real giveaway isn't it for the want-to-be should be rebels and their little bit of an outburst against the, the establishment. And what I find a little bit saddening is that Harry and Meghan have, in my humble opinion, in a great part, opened the door to break down these barriers to allow exactly this to happen. Let's be clear there will always be those that are no fans of the status quo, who are ready to grumble and who are ready to cause upheaval. And I'm worried it was Harry who convinced some of the people to act this way. After all, Harry was a senior royal member. And just what has he said? What Harry and Meghan have done is in the way of making no sense to me. I mean, if Harry wasn't happy with Britain, unhappy with his family, then okay, Harry. Go. Go from all of those negative people that were bringing you down. But Harry should have never set out to destroy his family, and everything they stand for. At first glance, Harry sure seemed happy with his family, his friends, his country, even his new stepmother, Camilla, when Harry was a young man he had his issues. He would go drinking, he was a wild boy. But whatever Harry did, to his family, to the outside world, back then Harry was tolerated. Oh sure, some of his rougher edges were smoothed down. But for the most part, Harry was just a cheeky kid, his escapades were a bit cheeky, and a bit amusing to the outside world and to his family. Not all that bad. Anyway, Harry got himself into trouble on occasion, but no one ever held it against him, that is, until Harry met Meghan Markle, well, it was certainly a different story for her. Harry, well he was smitten. 
and it really wasn't all that difficult to see why. Soon enough, he was wrapped around her little finger. Megan became his guru, his mommy. She was his portal into an authentic life, the one he told Oprah he was unaware he was denied while trapped in the royal family in which Megan revealed to Harry, as every good mommy should, just how miserable he was, as his brother and then his father had been. Oh Harry, for the last time, fine, whatever. If that's really how you feel, okay, go. Now go and find the true meaning of life. What the hell is about anyway, don't kept bring up all your problem, your family. By Harry and Meghan, going, going, gone. So Harry and Meghan escaped the maddening crowd, none of whom followed in suit, to their freedom. And essential to the journey were books and TV interviews. I mean, how else were they supposed to tell the whole world of their new awakening? They needed to tell us all where they went wrong, in the royal family, in Britain, they'd been freed from the bast and boom and pointed out the stains. How cathartic! And now, finito, after all that bullsh tea, have they found heaven on earth? Looks unlikely to me. No, they look to have gone from, or rather Meghan Markle him, to finding freedom, to the new, improved Harry wanting to come back to the bullsh tea? Yes, he no longer wishes to be known as Harry the Fool, he's already changing to Harry the Peacemaker. And I guess the royal family isn't toxic anymore. He loves them now. Did you hear that? He wants to spend time. He wants to be there for them. The country is going through this crisis. It's when a family should be together. Really? Harry. Do you hear yourself? You see, teenagers are rebellious. Their parents are the barrier to their freedom. But eventually, they grow up. They become adults. They have more responsibilities to attend. They realize that life is hard. And then, like the prodigal son in the Bible used in Luke 15, they return to their families and they ask for forgiveness. Of course, the biblical father didn't have a big loss. I mean, he had enough sons to forgive and forget. The royal family? No, Harry ruined them in a way the biblical prodigal son didn't. We are all making mistakes. But we wouldn't turn around and then go on a TV interview afterwards and write it up in a book. No, I don't think that forgivable at all at this point in time. Thinking in science. When a scientific model is thrown out, when it can be shown that a better and more effective and efficient model can be made. So as long as this new improved model can be shown to be valuable. So, all right, can we apply that way of thinking to a social structure? Oh, the monarchy has stood the test of time. People are loyal. There is a need for the monarchy. There is a need for everything. So, as a result, there would be no reason to throw away this pillar of the society. Harry and Meghan have taught us that being loved up is not enough to destroy this, so if they have learned that it's too late now. May Graham Smith not hold his breath that his book will indeed prove to be not all that popular because while the numbers of people who support the monarchy and royal family are still so great, so too, will the probability of it being successful. It won't be because, as long as there is a need, as long as there is a love and respect by citizens of the UK and the Commonwealth for the monarchy, people will always step up to the plate to do whatever needs to be done to preserve it, because it represents something that is bigger than all of us. That's it for our video my friends, I hope you have liked it, please let me know your thoughts in the comments, and like the video. If you haven't done so yet if you want to be first to be informed about my content, please subscribe to the channel and make sure you turn on notifications. Thank you for spending this time with me, take care of yourself and stay healthy, I'll see you in the next one.